everyone, Zambia One Nation, and happy Easter to you all. This is Zanis News. To present the news, my name is Faith Katai. The headlines. New classroom block at Namuela in Chadiza encourages children to return back. Union for Harmonization of Conditions of Service for Public Service Workers and Farmers Encouraged to Plant Winter Maize. And Zanis News in detail. The newly built one by three classroom block at Namuela Primary School in Chadiza District of Eastern Province has enticed Watson Zulu, 14 year old Ekato Heda, to go back to school. The block constructed using the Constituency Development Fund has also encouraged many other children to go back to school because of the conducive learning environment. Details in this report by Lubasi Mutafela. 14-year-old Wilson Zimba of Chadiza District in Eastern Province has been heading Keto since he was five and had no other career dream but to remain a Keto tender. But now, upon seeing this new classroom block furnished with desks near his home, constructed under the Constituents European Fund CDF, Wilson has changed his lifestyle and has decided to go back to school. No, yes, I am on that. So, <coughs> I'm bad here, I'm on the school and you are my desk and you are. So, I'm in a boy's school, Punzi, the gate. Now, I'm the gate one. I'm the way I get it too. This newly built classroom block has motivated many boys and girls to go back to school, and authorities here have attested to this. After we are given that block, the situation of the enrollment has increased. From 365 to 490 as at now, we are about 490 learners. And the CDF, they have even given us some desks. So learners now, they are sitting on the desks. Even the shed, we are still using the shed due to the population, it is still high. The local authorities equally impressed with the increase in enrollment here. When they saw that, you know, uh, we are buying new desks, we are also putting up new classroom blocks, we did a free education, which has also come. Those that were not going to school, they have started. So the number of people that are going to school have also gone up. Uh, our young boys and girls, those that stopped school some time back, are back in, in school. They have been motivated. It's a bigger motivation on their part. And we are happy. And we want this to continue. It is a plus on part of Chadiza district. Right now, we have engaged their royal highnesses that we come up with committees in each and every village where a headman will be in charge. If any child is not taken to school or is given out to labor, they should report to their royal highnesses who in turn rehearse with our office so that we make sure that that child go back to school. Luba Simtafela, Zanis, Chadiza District, Eastern Province. Still in education news, World Vision Zambia has reiterated its commitment to supporting government's effort aimed at improving the quality of education among learners across the country. World Vision Zambia Chongo and Mangoe Area Cluster Manager Savoy Simasiku says this is why the organization is rolling out the reading and writing campaign in schools of operation to enhance learners' performances. More in this report. Literacy is crucial to children's academic progression and this is why World Vision has continued its campaign of supporting reading and writing among school-going children in its areas of operation. This development has excited the Ministry of Education. Under World Vision we have a total number of 23 schools that receive support. And this, is, this support indeed has gone a long way. As you may be well aware, the uh, Ministry of Education has a mammoth task in ensuring the provision of uh, quality education to our children. So the support of uh, World Vision and other stakeholders is more than welcome in our district. It's only by having them on board that we are able to record the learner performance that is usually recorded during uh, 
national examinations. World Vision Jongo and Magoy Krasta Area Manager Savoy Simasiku explains the significance of the program. So under this Unlock Literacy model, we are supporting the teachers to ensure that they have good methodologies of teaching the children on how they should be able to improve their skills in reading and writing. So these children we are focusing on are children from grade one to four. So apart from the school methodology, in this reading and lock literacy methodology, we are also equipping community members in the communities with the reading skills so that children also continue learning even in their villages. So what we seek to achieve at the end of it all is to have a learner that is able to read with fluency and also to have a child that belongs to a scripture union that is able to demonstrate a deeper and meaningful relationship with the other colleagues in the community. Ideally, we also want these children that we have here to appreciate the love of God, the love of God that is demonstrated through the many scriptures that we have in the Bible. We know that we have a lot of people who are living in the world, and we have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the world, and we have a lot of people who are living in the world. According to the Ministry of Education, the literacy rate in the country is above 87 percent and likely to increase further following the free education policy and literacy campaigns by stakeholders such as World Vision. Frederick Macha for Zanis, Southern Province. Musanweji, Ward Councillor in Mufumbe District, Hagai, Kenya, says plans are underway by government to work on the bridge across Musanweji River to enable people access health services, among other social services in the district. Jennifer Mutoshi now reports. Applying doctor service to reach every patient, even in the remotest parts of Zambia, has been countered by challenges. Here, the team in Mufumbo is unable to cross over to Musanweji area to provide health services due to the absence of a bridge. The situation has displeased the residents who have opted to access the service at the nearest Kawipupu Rural Health Center. We have suffered bridge. as Musonwezi residents due to the lack of a bridge. Even as we speak, the Zambia Flying Doctor Service has failed to cross over to provide the service. Nevertheless, all hope is not lost for the residents as plans are underway to work on the road. We applied to the CDFC committee over the road so that they can work on the road. But we are promised that the road will be worked on this year. We are planning to make the bridges, like we are promised that the acro bridges from Solid River and Dongwe River, they are in Rusaka. We are just waiting for money for installation so that they can be installed from Rusaka to here so that they can be put at the crossing point that we usually cross here in Musonid River and Dongo River. Meanwhile, the services offered by the Zambia Flying Doctor at Kabipupu Rural Health Center are appreciated. I've come here in Kabipupu to be distracted my tooth which was disturbing me and the, the way you can hear I'm even failing to speak. So Zambia Flying Doctor, they have really, really helped me. Yeah, they've really helped our clients and the community at large. With their coming here, at least uh, we saw some people who are, whose teeth were distracted and also all the eye problems were attended to. Reporting for Zanis in Mufumbo District, Jennifer Mtoshi. Minister of Mines and Minerals Development, Paul Kabusui, has taken a swipe at people trying to divide the country on tribal lines. Mr. Kawuswe says Zambians are intertwined as one people, hence no one should divide the country based on ethnicity. He said this last evening when he officiated at the 2024 Luanza Traditional Ceremony Fundraising Dinner. Mr. Kabuswe stressed that President Hagainde Hichilema should be given a chance to reunite the Zambian people and fix the country's economy. He also donated 50,000 kwacha while Minister of Information and Media Cornelius Muetwa contributed 20,000 kwacha towards the successful hosting of this year's Luanza traditional ceremony of the Luindi people of Chief Hamusonde to be held from 19th to 11th August 2024.
We are not going to allow this country to be divided. And that is why, because God saw that where this country is going is in the wrong direction, Kufunya Polungu Aka India is to come and unite this country. And I am so glad I'm guest of honor today here, Kuluanza, all the way from Northern Province. This is how it should be because God made us different so that when we meet, we complement each other. That's why we were made different. This year's Wanza traditional ceremony will be unique as we shift towards measures of how to adopt climate resilience to help our people preserve their animals, the game, and also to be food secure. Honorable Minister, Southern Province is one of the provinces that were badly hit by the drought, affecting not only the maize, but our water security that plays a huge role in sustaining our wealth. As such, we stand ready to work with the government in implementing measures towards sustaining cattle wealth in the chiefdom. Civil servants and allied workers union of Zambia General Secretary Makai Makai has called for the harmonization of the pension administration for public service workers under the National Pension Scheme Authority and Public Service Pension Fund. Details in the following report. As one ages, their vulnerability levels increase, either in terms of health or economically. The Civil Servants Allied Workers Union of Zambia, SAWUS, is concerned about public workers' vulnerability in retirement. Government workers are employees of one government, the government of the Republic of Zambia. And as such, they serve under the same conditions, the terms and conditions of service. Unfortunately, they are treated differently when it comes to pension administration. Those who were employed before 2000, they contribute to the Public Service Pensions Fund. And those who were employed after February 2000, they contribute to the National Pension Scheme Authority. And according to our analysis, we have observed and realized that those contributing to the Public Service Pensions Fund are treated far much better than those contributing to the National Pension Scheme Authority. Why? This is because the two schemes are different. I mean, today is budgeting a lot of money towards social cash transfer because the people are, 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 are struggling and people are suffering in old age. He also made some appeals to government. Our humble appeal is that the current government should quicken the process of harmonizing these two pension schemes. We want to call upon government to one, either give workers an opportunity or a chance to choose where to belong to so that they are able to determine their life in retirement. Secondly, the other option is either to create another pension scheme specifically for civil servants so that in civil servants they also contribute to two pension schemes so that when they retire, they get something from NAPSA and they also get something from that other scheme. We are seeing it and we have seen it with the, the granted institutions. A good example is NAPSA itself. Shilika Chabalengula, Fozanis, in Lusaka. Chief Mkula of Chinsali District in Muchenga Province has commended government for attaining a deal to restructure 3.5 billion United States dollars with the Eurobond holders. He says the continuous debt restructuring deals being negotiated by President Hagainde Hichilema and his administration is a step in the right direction as it gives hope that things will be better soon. The chief said this when the permanent secretary for special duties at cabinet office, Patrick, Patrick Mucheleka, called on him. Miriam Kumwenda has more in this report.
Senior Chief Nkola of the Bemba people in Chinsali district of Mchinga province has expressed delight over the recent debt restructuring deal. The traditional leader was speaking when Permanent Secretary for Special Duties at Cabinet Office, Patrick Mcheleka, in the company of Mchinga Province Permanent Secretary Henry Mukongole, paid a kete score on him to explain on various economical issues. We are so delighted that uh, we have reached that far and we are optimistic that uh, things will start changing. Mm -hmm. Though it will be gradual, mm -hmm. but we are optimistic that uh, one day we will reach there. True. Even he picking, it took time. Yeah, it took it didn't time. just come that very day, no. and we reached the no, no, no. completion. It's important that uh, you have taken up that step to sensitize our people. They understand where we are coming from and where we are. And where we are going, mm. these people you are seeing in these villages, they are the very people that require this information. Mm. Because even in them, when you say data restructuring, to them they don't understand it. Mm. Or they will think, ah, but if they have restructured, why are we, are we still suffering? Ah, why are we still suffering? Earlier, the two permanent secretaries took turns to explain. Also affecting us is certainly when you look at the geopolitical conflicts and then the, the, the high cost of living at global level, it is threatening the infinity international security. Mm -hmm. And indeed the homeland security in most of the countries. Because the doom sawyers mm -hmm. have taken advantage of that because they think that our people have no access to information. Mm -hmm. So they're churning out a lot of propaganda based on falsehoods mm -hmm. to try and mislead the uh, people who they think uh, have no access to information. to information. We heard where our official creditors had actually agreed to actually cancel some of the interest and some of the monies as well. So we are now able to, to breathe. Again, we heard because of the credibility that we managed again to have investors to come and invest in mining. So we have Mopani now uh, back on its feet. Miriam Kumwenda reporting for Zanis in Chinsali, Uchinga province. The civil servants and allied workers union of Zambia says Zambia's agreement with Eurobond holders on the terms of rest debt restructuring is critical to restoring the country's debt sustainability. The union general secretary Makai Makai has told Zanis in an interview that the debt agreement will help Zambia attract new investments, accelerate growth, generate jobs and respond to other national priorities. Mr. Makai says the country is likely to accrue benefits following the debt restructuring agreement. He also says with reduced saving costs, the government will also be able to allocate more resources towards other sectors of the economy, leading to increased production and supply, thereby containing inflationary pressures and maintaining price stability. Zambia's debt restructuring means reducing the debt servicing obligations and extending the repayment period on favorable interest rates and limiting annual principal payments. What therefore are the benefits of this issue of debt restructuring? One, the first benefit has to do with Zambia's sovereign rating. A country's sovereign rating plays a crucial role in the global financial landscape and holds significant importance for various stakeholders including governments, investors, financial institutions, and businesses. The sovereign rating indicates a country's creditworthiness and the ability to meet its financial obligations. Uh, reducing the debt servicing obligations alleviates pressure on the country's foreign reserves and stabilizes the exchange rate. That debt structuring will have positive effects on inflation. To instill confidence in the economy and create a favorable environment for investment, the debt restructuring will uplift Zambia's fiscal stance. By utilizing these funds coming from the reduced debt servicing obligations, there is great potential to generate significant social economic benefits. So it is every government's desire that they create more jobs for the citizens. And when more jobs are created for the citizens, it improves the livelihoods of the citizens. As a union, let me also take this opportunity to challenge the politicians and to advise them at the same time 
Because what we are seeing in Zambia is politics of just arguments, politics of insults, politics of, ex of condemning everything that those in the power are doing. For us, we feel it is not right. Our humble appeal to the politicians is when your friend who is in government does a good thing which benefits the citizens, who you also aspire to come and lead when you take over office, can you learn to stand up and clap for them? The Kasama Municipal Council has elected Lua, Luo Ward Councillor Felix Musonda as the newly deputy mayor of Kasama. This was during the ordinary elective council meeting held in Kasama. More in this report. The Kasama Municipal Council has held its ordinary council meeting to elect the deputy mayor. Three councillors contested the elections and 21 votes were casted. Lualua Ward Councillor Felix Musonda emerged as the winner after scooping 10 votes. Kasama Town Clerk Moses Muirwa presided over the elections. That they are in accordance with the law. Setting the results of the deputy mayor election in the Kasama Municipal Council, and that they have been given to one Felix K. Musonda, 10 votes, two Elias Musonda, 6 votes, three Clifford Munkonge, 5 votes. I therefore declare that the said Felix K. Musonda be this day duly elected as deputy mayor for Kasama Municipal Council. Kasama Mayor Teresa Kolara congratulated the deputy mayor elect. Qualities, integrity, and vision should continue. As you take on this role, I have full confidence in your ability to serve with excellence, integrity, and compassion. Your experience, vision, and dedication will undoubtedly contribute to the continued growth and prosperity of our town. Mr. Msonda could not hide his excitement about his election to the position. Reporting for Zanis in Kasama District, I'm Jafet Munkondia. A Kafue-based conservation farmer has implored small-scale farmers in the country to adopt the planting of winter maize. Sinoya Piwi has encouraged smallholder farmers to leverage on the benefits that comes with planting irrigated winter maize compared to rain-fed maize. Laxon Makosa has more in this report. A kafiwe based conservation farmers advise small-scale farmers in the country to embrace winter maize farming. Sonia Piri says winter maize is more profitable compared to rain-fed maize. Mr. Piri reveals that through winter maize, he has managed to build a decent house from the sales of maize cobs. Winter maize is more profitable than the rain season because this one we are selling at three quarters per cob. So as you can see, this is the small portion. I'm expecting to harvest here at least eight to 9,000, which is very good. Now to compare to the dry maize, you can't have, you can't have eight pin, nine pin. You only sell it at two pin or three pin. So it's where the difference is. And Mr. Piri has also urged small-scale farmers to practice crop rotation so as to enhance crop productivity. I'm appealing to my fellow farmers so that they can even sank boreholes in their farms, then they do crop rotation through, throughout the year. Again, don't grow maize, maize in the same portion. At least you do crop rotation so that you give chance the soil to more fertility. Meanwhile, an academician from the University of Zambia says conservation farming as demonstrated by Mr. Piri, is ideal in the wake of climate change. I was mentioning to us that uh, their life has evolved. Uh, because uh, when I just uh, finished my undergraduate, somewhere in 2008, those are the first farmers I worked with. They were living in mud houses. But now when we went there, you find that they've given tapped power, all these uh, indicators, economical indicators of wealth, we are able to see them today. Indeed, winter maize cultivation has the potential to improve the livelihoods of small scale farmers as it is more profitable compared to rain fed maize. For Zanis, I'm Nakson Makodza. You are still watching Zanis News. Nine members of the Seventh day Adventist Church, Central Church in uh, 
Mbala district have been injured after a war fence collapsed on them. Northern Province Police Commissioner Laki Mungkondia says the incident happened yesterday around 15.35 hours after a heavy downpour in the area. Ms. Mungkondia has explained that the incident happened when the choir members had a meeting in one of the structures near the church war fence, which later collapsed after the downpour. She says the incident was reported by police by Chisanga Wadia, an elder of the church. The police commissioner says the members sustained different injuries ranging from general body pains, painful waist, swollen heads and cuts among others and were rushed to Mbala General Hospital where they were treated. Ms. Mungodia said this, is, said this in a statement made available to Zanis in Lusaka. Meanwhile, a check by Zanis at the hospital found that the victims have been discharged while only two people are still admitted. Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Grandson Katambi has advised parents to continue mentoring their children to avoid divorce. Kaneo Katambi said this when he officiated at a wedding of Senior Chief Mujimanzovu's son. More in the following report. Dawned in royalty is Prince Barnett, Senior Chief Mujimanzovu's son, with his bride Rosta. The young man has finally left his father and mother to cling to his wife and the two are now one. Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Colonel Grandson Katambi retired celebrates the union. It's our responsibility. Go your children. When you go children, I'm saying not a child. Children must be called together. Sit them together and give them the examples of where you have come from. Tell them. Marriage is in four stages, I mean three stages. Where we are, Barnett and Rosta, we are still in that stage where you are kissing, cheating each other, darling, where you can't sleep because of you, and yet you have just woken up. The two families cancel the new couple. It is our prayer that this marriage will be filled with love, joy, happiness, and laughter. I want you to terminate the contract that you had with the Shivukombe and with the Nabukombe because you are a man. And I want you today to sign a contract with Jesus. Meanwhile, Katombola member of parliament, Clement Andeleki, traveled all the way to bless the couple with a gift. Here yeah, to grant the seed. And the seed is for both of you. Two cattle. One heifer and one bull of Musmara beans. In attendance were various chiefs and government officials reporting for the news in Saloisi district. Jennifer Itoshi. That item brings us to the end of the news, but before we go, a recap of the stories that made headlines. The new classroom block at Namuela in Chadiza encourages children to weekend back. Union for Harmonization of Conditions of Service for Public Service Workers and Farmers Encouraged to Plant Winter Mains. That's all we had for you on Zanis News. This has been Faith Kataya on behalf of the entire Zanis production team. Thank you for watching.